Noema, so many times since Dulce went missing, you have been attacked. You have been attacked because you were sitting in the car helping with homework. And you know what? I've done it myself. I, who have literally written a book, including Child Safety at Playgrounds, I had to bring one of my twins back to the car. She wanted bottled water then that was in the cooler. My daughter was red in the face and flushed, so we go back to the car. It was about, oh gosh, 30, 40 yards from my son. I could see him. I could see him going up the slide and coming down. And I opened up the trunk of the car. I couldn't see him at that time. I got out the water. I gave it to my daughter. I shut the trunk. I got something else out of the car. And we walked back to where my son was. I've done it more than once. Because I believed I could see him. You were not that far away from Dulce. Your attention, true, was diverted. But you were not that far away from Dulce. You could see her and her little brother, Manny. Noema, tell me what happened the day your five-year-old daughter vanished. It was a Monday, September 16th. Um, I remember that I wasn't working at that time. My mom wasn't working. Either she had her day off and... Um, the kids were getting ready to go to school, so I went to go get coffee and donuts at Dunkin' Donuts. And while Dulce was getting ready, she already knew that I was going to get donuts. And I went, and I was coming, I was coming back, and I was, I was about to run over someone, and I was getting delayed. So as as soon as I got home, Dulce was already on the bus, and. My mom had told me that she was crying because she didn't want to get on the bus. And my mom told her she has to go on the bus. She has to go to school. And she, my mom said that she returned back. Before she went inside the bus, she came and went and hugged my mom, and then she left. After that, we went to Manuel's appointment, and we had went out to eat. After that, we had came home. It was already time for the kids to come home. So I had went to Dulce's bus stop with for Dulce and Camila um, get off. And I went and got them off. We got home and um, Dulce tells me they wanted to go, they wanted to go play. Then I told them, okay, but it was hot that day. And then I just didn't want her to go no more. And I told her, we're not gonna go no more. And then I still remember that she started crying. She started jumping up and down. Then she said, I want to go. She said, I want to go to the park. You say we were going, and now you're saying not, no. And as I felt bad because I told her that we were going to go, but we, uh, then I was telling her that we weren't going to go no more. But then at the end, we did went. And we were going to the park, and like, it was hot. I asked them if they wanted an ice cream, and they said yes. We stopped an ice cream shop, and but as soon as I noticed that ice cream shop was closed, and so we went to a nearby gas station, and that's where the kids were getting their ice cream. And we they got their ice cream, and I got a lottery lottery ticket. After there, we went to the park. As soon as we got out, we got in the park, Dulce started opening her ice cream manual too. And they were so excited that they were already, they wanted to get down from the park. I told them to wait, but they were already, they were excited. I'm like, okay, you guys could go. And my sister Camila, um, she, at that time she was doing bad at school and I had to help her with her homework so she could get better. And I told her to stay in the car until she finished her homework. And I stayed with her inside the car. And I let my two kids, Manuel and Dulce Maria, go play in the playground. But I could see the playground where was I parked at. But the only thing I couldn't see was the swings 